Let's now make a connection uh, between what we just did, the example using, uh, res using uh, replication and pricing an option like that, with uh, Martingale pricing. Uh, all right. Actually, before doing the example, let's first show where, why it is correct to price under Martingale probabilities. So suppose you find a probability Q under which the discounted wealth process is a martingale, and uh, if the discounted stock prices are martingales, then the wealth process is discounted wealth process is also going to be a martingale. Uh, so let's assume that uh, we have a discounted wealth process that is a martingale under some probability Q, which is not necessarily the actual probability, typically will not be. And suppose we can replicate a claim, see a random payoff, see a capital T. Th so that, by definition of replication, means that the, the X of capital T, our wealth of capital T, is equal to C of capital T. Okay? So let's look at the following. If I look at the discounted value of the claim to th of the wealth today, by the Martingale property, this is just the Martingale property, the first equality, it's equal to the expected value of the discounted uh, uh, future payoff, uh, future value of the, of the portfolio under Q. But by replication, this discounted X of T is equal to discounted C of T. Okay? So the discounted cost of replicating is equal to the expected value of the discounted payoff of our option, our claim. Okay. So if I de-discount, uh, for example, if the discounting is done at the constant continuous compounded rate R, and I move discounting to the other side, this is the same as saying that X of T is equal to conditional expectation time T under Q of discounted future payoff C of T. Okay. This is the cost of replicating C of T. The portfolio, which starts at small t, replicates at capital T. This is the cost. By definition, it has to be the price. Okay? The cost of replication has to be the price. So that, that's it. We, we get this our main formula. Uh, and this doesn't really depend on the model. It depends on two assumptions. One assumption is there exists a martingale probability under which discounted a wealth process is a martingale. And the other assumption is that I can replicate this claim. I can replicate this claim, and then under any Martingale probability Q, uh, the price of the option is the cost of replication, therefore is equal to the expected value under Q of the discounted payoff. Okay. Uh, it's a very general formula for payoffs that can be replicated. It's actually a formula that Black and Scholes didn't really know, because at that time uh, there was no notion of Martingale uh, probabilities, uh, risk neutral pricing. They did it differently. We will see how they did it. It was basically the same idea of replication there. But, n but this formula is actually more general, because this is under any model. As long as you can replicate this claim and there is a Martingale probability, this formula is correct for European type payoffs. Right? Uh, uh, so it doesn't have to be. Uh, continuous, discrete, whatever the model is. And it's a very general formula. And simple looking. Now, pretty much almost everything else in the course is just going to be computing this in different mathematical models. Right? Computing, computing uh, uh, expectations like this in different mathematical models. And we'll also talk about hedging, which is not here. Hed it's, the formula doesn't give you exactly how to replicate. That's going to be different in different models. Okay, so that's our main message. The cost of replication at time t, x of t, uh, uh, is the price of the claim, and, and it's equal to the expectation under Q, under the Martingale probability, of the discounted future payoff of the claim. Okay? The, the main principle in, in the option pricing theory. Okay? Now, in practice, maybe you cannot replicate claims, typically, uh, complicated claims like options cannot quite be replicated by trading in basic assets, but maybe approximately they can be replicated, and then maybe uh, you hope that the formula like this will approximately hold and give you some idea how much the option should should uh, be worth. All right, so let's that's the theory. Let's go back to our example and use this formula to price the option in the same example we had before. Okay. 
actually, for, let's first not do the example, but let's just do general binomial model. And let's, in fact, here just single period binomial model, but general. Uh, the future wealth of a portfolio is money in the bank initially times 1 plus r, money in the bank in the future, plus shares in the stock times the future value of the stock. I'm going to have only one stock here. When you discount, 1 plus r disappears, delta 0 plus delta 1 discount this bar 1. Okay. Why did I do this? I just did this to show you indeed that, at least in this model, but it's also true in other models, if the discounted stock is a martingale, then also discounted wealth is a martingale, and therefore the conclusion from the previous slide still holds, the formula still holds. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to, in order to find probability Q under which discounted uh, wealth is a martingale, I, I'm simply going to look for the probability uh, Q under which discounted stock price is a martingale. All right. What does it mean in the single period model? It simply means that today's stock price at time zero has to be equal to the expected value of the stock price in the future discounted under probability Q, which we are looking for. We are looking for this probability Q. Okay. Uh, well, this is a simple model. There's only two possible values for the stock, SU and SD. How do you compute expectation of a random variable like that? You multiply SU by, by its probability of going up, Q. And you multiply SD by the probability of going down, which is 1 minus Q. And then you just divide by 1 plus R. Yeah? This is the expectation. The weighted average according to the probabilities Q and 1 minus Q of the up value and of the down value. All right, uh, let's use the cox ross rubinstein model. In S instead of SU, write S of 0 times U. Instead of SD, write S of 0 times D. And solve for Q. This is an equation. The, the unknown thing here is Q. I know S0, and I, I know my model. Uh, let's compute Q. So using the left-hand side equal to this right-hand side, if you compute Q, you get a formula. Q is 1 plus R minus D over U minus D. And 1 minus Q is U minus 1 plus R over U minus D. These are my pricing probabilities for up and down move. These are not the actual probabilities. In fact, I never told you what the actual probabilities are. I don't need them. I don't need, in these formulas and to price options, I will not need the actual probabilities of, an, of a stock going, of the underlying going up or down. Th that, that's a bit counterintuitive the first time you see this, uh, the, the, uh, because it looks like let's say a call option should be worth more if there is a high probability of the stock going up because the call option will pay you more if the stock goes up. However, in these type of models, it doesn't matter that the probability is higher. Yes, the option will pay you more, but it doesn't matter because you can 100% hedge, you can completely hedge the option payoff. So whether the stock is going up or down, your hedge will change. You will just you know, trade less or more in the stock, less or more in the bank account, and you will follow the movements of the stock by uh, hedging in the in the bank and the, uh, uh, the uh, and the stock to hedge the option payoff, and you don't care whether it's moving up or down. Now, in reality, again, this is not quite going to be the case, and it may be that if there is a higher probability of uh, the stock going up and the call option ending up in the money, that it's that maybe that it will be traded at a higher price. But in, in the basic theory, in the basic theory with these type of models, it, when you, where you can 100% replicate the payoff of the option, the prob actual probabilities of moving up or down do not matter. Okay. And we'll come back to this issue when we do black shawls. It's actually one of the reasons why this is practical in practice, because in practice these probabilities are hard to estimate of going up or down. U and D may also not, it's not obvious how to estimate U and D, the upper and, and, and down move, but that's going to be easier and it's related to the volatility of the stock, which is easier to estimate. But we'll do that later. All right, look at these formulas. Uh, there is another thing here to, to, to notice, which is that this, in fact, under my condition, remember that condition that uh, U has to be uh, bigger than, uh, this is not a good pen, 
uh, that u has to be bigger than 1 plus r, and uh, this has to be bigger than d. Uh, under that condition, uh, actually, this q and 1 minus q, in fact, are probabilities. They are between 0 and 1. Okay? Uh, and this is positive, u is bigger than d, this is positive, and this is positive. And these, these two guys add up to 1, and they're both positive, so they're between 0 and 1. So th th this condition, which I claimed was, uh, was the no arbitrage condition for this model, in fact guarantees that, that uh, there are these martingale probabilities. There is a theorem behind this, but uh, we'll do that in the next time, in the next set of slides. Yeah. All right, so we, we had a general formula for any model. Now we have that formula for, uh, for the binomial model, single period binomial model. Let's use it in, in, in the same example we did before. If you remember the example, the up value was 101, the down value was 99, which means u is 1.01 .01 and d is 0.99. So I can compute my q. Uh, r was 0 0.05, so 105 minus 0.99, 101 minus 0.99, 99. Um, you compute that, you get 0.75. This happens to be close to the price of the ocean point seven four something, but that's just by chance, by coincidence. Okay, so point seventy five is the risk neutral pricing probability of this option. Yeah. And um, let's check that the formula works. By our theory, the price of the option should be expectation under Q over the payoff divided by one plus R. I factor out one plus r, one over one plus r. The expectation is up value, which I call c up times q plus down value times uh, one minus q. Okay, that's the expectation on the q. Well, up value is one over one minus hundred is just one, and the down value is zero. So I have one over one plus point zero five. Uh, Q is 0 0.75 times 1 plus 1 minus 0 0.75 1 minus Q times 0. If you compute this, you will get 0 0.746. You can check that. Yeah? And you should. We already proved this should be the case. Uh, but this is just numerically checking in this example that indeed there is two ways to price uh, this option in this model. One is the uh, replication argument. I can actually replicate the payoff 1 or 0 uh, in this model. And then the cost of replication, which is 0.746, has to be the price. But actually, that same uh, value can be obtained as the expected value of the discount claim under the Martingale product. Okay. So all the economics of option pricing is in these slides that we have just done. Yeah, everything else is just going to be more complicated and more realistic, more sophisticated mathematical models.